the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Would you please stand and join me for the call to worship. Make a joyful noise, all the earth. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Let us worship God. And let's sing that call to worship together. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. God, we enter your gates so grateful with such thanksgiving in our hearts for what you have done for us, what you have done in our midst. Lord, we enter your courts with praise. Hear our worship in this hour, for you have made us glad. We pray it in the name of Christ. Amen.
The Lord has done great things for us in forgiving us our sin and in showing His grace to us. So pray now using the prayer of confession found on the first page of your bulletin or up on the screen. Together praying, Gracious God, You have stored a great treasure in broken earthen vessels. How amazing that your gospel message is entrusted to a broken church, your ministry to a community of wounded healers, for the ways we have failed to carry and deliver that precious treasure, forgive us. And for the successes and blessings we have known, we offer you alone the glory and lift thanks for your mercies and the powerful movement of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Take a moment now to make this prayer your own in a time of silent confession. Now hear these words of assurance from the letter to the Colossians. Jesus Christ is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. People of God, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
As forgiven people, we are a joyful people, so let's greet one another with a sign of our joy and of Christ's peace. Good morning, Chuck. How are you? Good morning, Tom. Well, once again, good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Hamilton Square. We are so glad that you are here with us worshiping this morning on a special Sunday here in the life of our church because this is a Sunday where we are celebrating the more than 15 years of ministry of our pastor, Doug Cornelius, with us. And so we are, are saying farewell to him and celebrating the ministry that he has done among us and the way that God has worked through him and among us uh, because of his faithfulness. So we are saying thank you to him and to God this morning, and we're glad that you're here to do it with us. We exist because we are called to experience and to share the transforming grace of Jesus Christ, and that is what we are all about. That's the only thing that we are about and we do that in all kinds of ways through our ministries. You can see announcements about those ministries in our bulletin. And I just want to call out a few to you. You saw an email go out about this earlier in the week. And uh, you see the, an announcement about it. But the retreat is coming up. And we need to know today whether you are planning on attending and being a part of that. You can use the link that's in the announcement or the QR code to sign up and to let us know that you'd like to be a part. This is a revamped retreat that's focused on surface and mission work. We have all kinds of activities for people of all ages, all kinds of ability levels, and we would love to have you be a part of that. So if you would like to take part in our Serve Mission Retreat, October 13th through 15th, please uh, follow the instructions in your bulletin. We also wanna let you know that the blood drive is coming back. It's been a while since we've done a blood drive here, but thanks to our friends at the Red Cross, we are going to be putting on another one. It's going to be taking place on Saturday, October 21st, from 9 to 2 in Swayze Hall. Now here's the thing, you have to make an appointment if you want to give blood at this drive. That's the way that the Red Cross system works now, and you can follow the link in the announcement or using the QR code, and that will take you to a page where you can sign up for your time uh, to be a part of that. So we would encourage you to please give the gift of blood, one pint of blood, can save three lives. What a gift we would be able to give to our community by giving the gift of blood. You've heard of all about this, but another service opportunity that's coming up in just two weeks is Help Build Hope. We're going to be framing the walls for a home in our parking lot. Those walls are then going to be taken to Egg Harbor Township where they're going to be placed on a foundation and that is going to become a home for a, a wonderful family in partnership with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we are so excited that we get to do this again, and it's gonna be a wonderful event. Think of it as a mission trip that has come here. This is open to all ages. Invite your friends, the more the merrier. We need as many as 200 people to come and to help us build this home. Breakfast and lunch are provided, uh, and it's gonna be a wonderful event. If you could sign up, that would help us know how to plan that time effectively. Uh, you can use the QR code or the link about that. And then I just read this the other day. This is the kind of impact that this kind of ministry can have, and I even put it in the bulletin. 41% of Habitat for Humanity homeowners say that they have to go to the doctor less often once they begin living in their Habitat for Humanity home. It's because their homes are safer, they're not filled with mold or other allergens or, or bad paint and things like that. They're safer, they're better, and just the stress of having a, uh, not having a decent home is taken away from them. What a gift that we would be able to give our neighbors uh, by, by offering them a decent home to live in. So come and be a part of that. 
Is there anything else that's going on around here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> One regulation church party is taking place downstairs following worship. Uh, we've had a whole team working on this for the last few weeks, and so we invite you to please come and join us for a luncheon downstairs as we say thank you to Doug. So more announcements here in the bulletin. Uh, we encourage you to read that and to, to find ways to engage with this church. But for now, let's continue our worship. I will invite the children to come forward. Come on, yeah, all right. Well, you've heard Pastor Kyle mention it, and maybe your parents have talked to you about it. This is my last Sunday here at this church. You want to know why? I know. It makes me sad, too. But you want to know why? It's because another church has been without a pastor for a long time, and they needed somebody. And so I said I would go and help, and they thought that was a great idea. And, and I think God kind of told me to go over there. And so I just want to thank all of you for sharing me with them. I do, it's very, I know it's a hard thing to do and it makes some of us sad, um, but it's a wonderful thing to share in our ministry and I'm just so uh, thankful for you and proud of you that you're sharing me with another church, it's wonderful. And um, I also wanted you, as, as I go, I want you to, have a seat baby, have a seat. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, ask you three things, okay? I want you to remember three things. The first one is this. Remember that I like you. I like you just the way you are. I like that you are the children of our church, and I think you are so important, the most important. church because they love you just as you are, just the way you are. And then the last thing I want you to remember is that God loves you. God loves you just the way you are. And God is so happy that you're his child too. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Thank you, God, Thank you, God. for your love today. For your love today. For guiding, us for guiding us in every way. In every way. Teach, us to care. Teach us to care and not to fuss, and not to fuss. because we know. Amen. And we, we love you all too. I do too. All right, go, go ahead back to your seats. Children's bulletins are over there if you need them. So this is a big Sunday for me, all right? So here's the deal. We're gonna go a little over in this service, okay? Just a little bit, I won't keep you all afternoon, but we're just gonna go a little bit over because I just wanted to soak up every last minute of worship that, with you all that I could get. Um, and also uh, because, what are you gonna do, fire me? <laughs> uh, So we're going a little over, it'll be good. We'll worship together uh, on past the hour. The scripture for this morning is from the book of Philemon, verses four through seven. Hear the word of the Lord. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God. 
because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith towards the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brothers and sisters. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Sometimes in life you get more than you bargained for. The other night, Taylor was putting Annabelle to bed while I was here at praise team practice, and Annabelle asked Mommy to read her a book before bed. No big deal. And Annabelle chose one of her encyclopedias of animals. Now, these aren't children's encyclopedias, mind you. They are just encyclopedias. Lots of pictures, interesting info, but not always child-appropriate info. There's all kinds of information about predatory behaviors, mating rituals, pack dominance. It really keeps you on your toes as a parent reading the story or the information to a three-year-old. Why my kid can't just read Curious George and Winnie the Pooh like all the other kids, I don't know. No, we need an adult encyclopedia on the biological life on Earth. Great. So Taylor's reading to her and reading about bears. And of course, amidst all the fancy pictures and, uh, of all manner of bear and the reading material, it inevitably turns to hunting, to predation, what the bear eats. But Annabelle wants the book, so we read her the book. And of course, the book tells us that bears eat fish, large birds, they eat rabbits, they eat deer, polar bears even eat seals, and so on and so forth. And Annabelle, looking very disturbed by all this, says, they eat the nice deer? <laughs> yes, baby, they eat the deer. They need to eat them to live. Well, what happens to the deer when they die? Well, baby, they, they go to be with God. God takes care of them forever and ever. And he pauses a moment and then says, I don't like God. Oh, well. Taylor says, okay, baby, it's okay to be angry at God. Tell, tell me why you don't like God. Because he keeps all the animals forever and doesn't give them back. Taylor sees the concern on Annabelle's face and says, yes, honey, I know that's hard, but all the animals, they're so happy to be with God. It's, it's their favorite place in the whole world, and it's, it's also true for us. When we die and we go with be, be with God, it's our favorite place, and we're happy forever and ever with all the people we love and all the animals. And Annabelle's eyes got huge, and she said, we die? <laughs> And then Taylor took five minutes to soften the blow of letting a three-year-old in on their own mortality. All in a bedtime book story. Sometimes you get more than you bargained for. It's true in a bedtime story, it's true in a conversation, a relationship, a decision, and it's true in ministry. You ordained me to my first call 15 years ago. And you probably thought you'd get me for a few years. After all, the average length of stay for an associate role pastor uh, in an ordained capacity is about three years. And here we are. 
you got more than you bargained for. But so did I. Sure, I got steady, full-time work in a church. That's always great, coming out of seminary. I got a great mentor in Pastor Andrew Barton, who is here this morning. I got real ministry to do, the real, the real heart of ministry, as I walked with teenagers through the toughest years of their lives, and I got to teach all ages in the church. I got to preach. I got to build houses. I got to play with an awesome praise team and baptize babies and help bury your loved ones. I got real ministry to do while I was here. But I also got a family. I got a church family out of it. And have grown to know and love so many of you. I signed up for a job. And I got a family. I got way more than I bargained for. Taylor and I have a little phrase that we toss around from time to time. We say, no past tense. Like we'll be remembering some old movie or TV show, and we'll say, oh, I loved that movie. No past tense. Oh, that professor was so boring. No past tense. <laughs> Oh, do you remember that vacation? That was the best vacation, wasn't it? No past tense. It's a little nod to the fact that some things, while they are in the past, while they happened in the past, they still continue to be true for us in some way. And we say it, we verbalize it, we put words to it in the past tense, but we really shouldn't because it's still true. And in fact, it will always be true. No past tense. Paul's letter to Philemon is one of my favorite books of the Bible. He's going to be asking his friend Philemon for a favor, asking Philemon to welcome back a runaway slave named Onesimus, who's now a Christian brother who Paul converted while in prison. And he's going to ask Philemon to welcome him back as a Christian brother rather than as a runaway slave, which was a crime uh, that could uh, demand execution. It's Paul not only preaching the ministry of reconciliation, writing it down in a New Testament letter, it's not only Paul preaching mercy, it's actually him using his own life and his own ministry to do it, to step in and create reconciliation in the world. And in typical Pauline fashion, there will be moments where he leaves aside the carrot and turns to the stick, where he tells Philemon, you know, you owe me your very life, where Paul claims his authority in the church, says that though he could command Philemon to do this, he will instead just ask him nicely to do it. But then he adds at the end of the letter, by the way, prepare a guest room for me. I'm going to come visit when I get out of prison. In other words, I'm going to come check to see if you've done what I asked. Paul apparently never heard the old adage, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. But then again, Paul does at least start the letter with the honey, doesn't he? He tells Philemon and presumably the whole community of believers around Philemon, I thank my God when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I have received much joy and encouragement from your love. Sweet life, honey. Paul was tough. But he did love his churches and his friends. Now this is my last sermon in this pulpit with all of you. And I could have gone all Pauline and given you a little vinegar with the honey. I mean, actually one time I literally gave you vinegar in communion cups during an outside the box worship service. Some of you remember that. And you're still working on forgiving me. That's okay. <laughs> 
I promise, I promise, by the way, I did not do that again this morning. But frankly, when I think of this place and I think of all of you and what our God has done in and through us together all these years, I am so overwhelmed with gratitude and joy. You know, I can't bring myself to serve up any vinegar today. As I reflect back on my ministry, my experiences, my time with all of you, I feel such warmth and such appreciation. Today, it's just kind of, it's just sweet. So in this final sermon, I'd like to offer you two gifts and give you two things to remember. Two gifts and two things to remember. I can't tell you how many, uh, well, first of all, let's start with the two gifts. These aren't gifts I'm leaving you, by the way. Uh, they're gifts that I'm actually identifying in you. Two gifts. The first one is this. You have a gift for equipping the saints. Do you know that? You have a gift for equipping the saints. I can't tell you how many of our seminary interns have told me that their year here with this church was one of the best experiences they had preparing for ministry. Working with you, feeling your encouragement and your sense of family. I can't tell you how many of our youth have testified to your love and your faithfulness, how they felt that this church really does care about its young people. And many of those youth, many, many of them, have gone to do great things in our world, in our communities, in our church. You have the ability to not only prepare folks for a life of love and service and ministry, but you give them the tools and the encouragement and the sense of community and family to go do it. And I know it's true. just a youth minister here. Never really just an associate pastor. This church gave me opportunity to try all kinds of creative ministries, wacky ideas and worship through the arts and try new things, whether it was worship outside the box or a confirmation and Sunday school program that met at weird hours and was totally unorthodox in its format. You let me try it all. Along the way, I was included in the big decisions of the church and the overarching vision of the church time and time again, and I was given the respect of the title pastor. And all of that equipped me to go and do what I am now going to go do. Your trust in me, your faith in me, and the opportunities and encouragement child in the faith. I'm not, I'm not that young, but I was a child in ministry when I got here, and here is the truth. You raised me. You raised me in ministry. The heart of a saint was refreshed and given life by you, as Paul says. And all of that was always such a gift. No past tense. Gift number two. You are gifted in your enthusiasm for ministry. You have a heart for this being church thing. And I hope you never lose it. You have eclectic worship that is unlike anything else being offered in this area. The way you involve young people in leadership and upfront in music. You have a children's education program that is second to none. And would, I would stack it up against any Sunday school program in our area. And when the word gets out, it's going to continue to grow. You have a thriving preschool where children not only are learning social skills and classroom etiquette and important academic lessons, but they're also learning of God's love for them. You have dedicated leadership, young families, a youth group that survived the pandemic. And trust me. Most youth groups didn't. 
and is still thriving with a great core of teenagers. It's all because of you, because of the people behind these ministries, the people running them. You are the great gift of this church. And I thank my God when I have remembered you in my prayers. No past time. So keep at it. And finally, two things to remember. First, as I go, know that it was never about me. In Philemon, Paul doesn't make it about what he's done. It's not his own authority that he's writing with. It's not about who Paul is. He even points out he could do that, but he's not going to. He wants to point to Jesus. In the verse before our passage this morning, he leads into it with grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul decides to not use his authority as an apostle, the authority he appeals to is always Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus, that's all it's about. That's all it's ever been about. For Paul for me, for us. A few weeks ago, Lee White shared a story with me. His granddaughter was in the next room, singing just as loud as can be, Jesus loves me, this I know. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, singing it as loud as she can. And Lee went into the room and thought to have a little granddad moment with her, and he said, now how do you know that? How do you know that Jesus loves you? And he probably expected to hear, well, the Bible tells me so, right? That's what the song says, the Bible tells me so. But when he asked her how she knew that, she puffed her chest out. She looked so proud, she lifted her head high, and she said, Pastor Doug told me. <laughs> I can't tell you how humbling it is that even one child could say such a thing. To think that there may be dozens, even hundreds of former children and teenagers, former youth that know Jesus loved them and think, I know it because Pastor Doug told me so. I don't even have words to describe that. It's tremendously humbling. I'm so thankful for it, but here's the thing. I didn't tell them. Did you know that? I didn't tell them. I mean, I might have said it. It might have gone from my mouth to their ears, but I didn't really tell them. I didn't speak it deep down into their hearts, into their souls, because Christ alone can do that. The Spirit alone does that. It's our God, and God did that. God told them that God loves them. He just used me to do it. God spoke. He just used me to do it. As much as I have been woven into the fabric of so many different ministries in this church, the one steering the ship and the one making things happen was always Christ. The thing to remember is this. I'm leaving but he isn't. The God who made everything we ever accomplished together happen, and we did accomplish great things together. That God that made all of that possible is with every church, the one I'm going to and the one I'm leaving behind. God is with you. God is faithful. You will be just fine, in fact, better than fine. God will raise up a new leader and a new path forward for you and continue to accomplish great things. God is going to continue to call you as a church, continue to offer leadership through Pastor Tyler, transforming lives, working for justice, singing praises and all kinds of different songs, and connecting people to one simple truth. Jesus loves me. This I am. It has been God working through me, and working through you. All. Remember that. And on that one, by the way, 
definitely will pass. A closing word. One final thing to remember. I hope you'll remember me. Remember what we did here together. Remember it with humility and with joy. For it was more than any of us bargained for in all the best ways. I can't tell you how to remember me. That will be for you and your thoughts, your drifting daydreams and memories, the stories you tell in years to come. That will be for you to decide. If I'm lucky, maybe you'll think back. Say, boy, pretty good preacher and teacher. He helped us wrestle with the scriptures. Maybe you'll think he was so good at connecting with young people. Or maybe you'll think I loved his music that he offered in church. Maybe you'll remember the laughs we had. We did have a lot of laughs, didn't we? In classrooms and committees, on retreats and mission trips. Maybe you'll look back and you'll think, you know, that guy really wasn't my cup of tea. <laughs> that would be okay. That would be just fine. Maybe you'll remember me and simply think, you know, with him it was genuine. I think he really cared about all that Jesus stuff. But I suppose if I were going to allow a moment of honesty and vulnerability here as I close, I suppose it would be this. I would hope above all that you would look back at my time here, look back at me as your pastor, and say to one another, boy, he really loved this church. He really loved this church. Because I did. I really loved this church. I really loved all of you. I really did. You just heard about the impact that this church can have, that this church has had on, on one life. But the reality is, is that we have that impact on countless lives throughout our community because of the ministries that we do. And that's why we ask you to support this church with your financial gifts so that we can continue to have this kind of impact for Jesus Christ through all of our ministries, uh, of which Doug is just one example. So we invite you to give generously as the ushers come forward to collect our offering. And uh, before they do that, let's pray and dedicate our offering together. Oh Lord, bless the gifts that we're about to receive, that through them this church might go out and do the work of your kingdom for your glory, taking your love, your grace to everyone that we meet. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's uh, stand and sing together as the uh, as collect the offer.
Invite the uh, the elders and deacons assisting in communion to come forward. invites us to come and join together and with God in holy communion. Through Christ, we are made into family. I don't use that term just because I, I love y'all so much, which I do. I don't use it because it's just how this church likes to talk about it. I use it because scripture tells us so. We are given a divine inheritance that we are adopted sons and daughters of our Lord, and that makes us brothers and sisters. And this table binds us one to another through the Holy Spirit and through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it binds together 
the saints of God's church from every time and every place. What that means is it binds us with all the folks that have come before in the church. It binds us together with folks who are gathering around this table in churches all over our world. It binds us together with Christians who are celebrating the Lord's Supper right over in Paoli. Come, brothers and sisters, gather around the table of our Lord. Gather with me, not just this time, but every time. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we are thankful for this table and thankful for the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we pray your blessing upon these common elements of bread and drink, that by the power of your spirit they may become much more, that they would indeed become vessels of mercy, nourishing us on our spiritual path. For we pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus gathered in a room with his disciples. He took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body given for you. Take it, eat it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me.
bread of life. In the same way, Christ took the cup. He said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Take it, drink it, all of it, and do this in remembrance of me. People of God, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our risen Lord, saving death. Until he comes again.
cup of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come with such gratitude for the way your spirit works within us, for the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. bless us in so many ways each and every day. Lord, we are thankful. We are thankful for good ministry in this church, good ministry that has been done, and good ministry that is yet to come. Lord, I pray for this church, for your little pocket of children, faithful believers here in this corner of the world. I pray for them. Pray a fresh anointing of your spirit upon them, a fresh call of your spirit. And I pray that you would strengthen them in their gifts and in their weaknesses. Lord, in all these things, you are always more than enough. For that, we give you thanks and we offer up our world, our community, our loved ones things that weigh heavy on our hearts, the hearts of our loved ones, and even the hearts of strangers, Lord, we lift them up to you. You alone are our hope, and we offer you our all. For we pray it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'm going to ask Pastor Doug to come and join me by the baptismal font. Because ordination really is just another way of talking about what happens here at this font. It is, uh, the, the baptism is really in a way, it's a calling of all of us to the ministry of grace and reconciliation that has ca characterized Doug's ministry here among us. And the gift of pastors... It is a way that God proves his faithfulness to us. It is a gift that God gives to the church. And in many ways, this church uh, proves that because of the legacy that this church has in preparing men and women for ministry in the church. We can all think of all of the, the youth that have come through the nurturing embrace of this church, who have then gone on to, to ordered ministry within the church. And, and Doug, in many ways, is not different from that. You've spent just about as much time here as those kids who then go off to seminary. And so when I asked Doug what it was that he wanted as a part of this service, the one thing that he insisted on is that he wanted a chance for all of you to commission him to his new ministry at Paoli Presbyterian Church. So that's what we are going to do this morning. Doug, the grace bestowed on you in baptism is sufficient for your calling because it is God's grace. By God's grace, we are saved and enabled to grow in the faith and we commit our lives to the way that serve Christ. God has called you to particular service as a pastor of the Church of Jesus Christ. So in front of God and all of us, I invite you to answer these questions. Doug, who is your Lord and Savior? 
Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. Do you welcome the joy and responsibility of this calling because you are determined to follow the Lord Jesus, to love your neighbors, and to work for the reconciling of the world? I do. Will you serve the people the Lord has placed in your care with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, relying on God's mercy and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit? I will with God's help. And to all of you... Do you, the members of the First Presbyterian Church of Hamilton Square, confirm the call of our brother Doug to serve the Church of Jesus Christ as the pastor of Paoli Presbyterian Church? If so, please say, we do. We do. Let's pray. Faithful God, in baptism, you claimed us, and by your Holy Spirit, you are working in our lives, empowering us to live a life worthy of our calling. We thank you for leading Doug to this time and place. Establish him in your truth. Guide him by your Holy Spirit. That in your service he may grow in faith and hope and love and be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. And now I invite you to join me in praying with the words in your bulletin or up on the screen. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ you called disciples and by the Holy Spirit made them one church to serve you. Let your spirit rule your church so that we may be joined in love and service to Jesus Christ, who having gone before us is coming to meet us in the promise of your kingdom. Amen. Well, we have one gift among many for, for Doug, but one that we're going to give him as a symbol of this commissioning is this beautiful stole that he'll be able to use with him in his new ministry. You're taller than I am, so this is going to be a little hard for me. Doug, with our love and our gratitude and our prayers represented in this stole, we send you out into the in the name of Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work of the gospel among the people of Paoli Presbyterian Church. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God through him. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, you've always been a blessing to me, and it was important to me that uh, I received, you know, another blessing on my way out the door here. Am I on or off? It says I'm on. All right. As I mentioned in my sermon, I am so filled with gratitude to our God and this church. I can't really put it into adequate words. However blessed you are feeling to have had me as your pastor, I feel 10 times more blessed to have been your pastor. And I have all the feels that all of you do. I'm excited about this new call, and I know many of you are excited for me, but I know it hurts and saddens many of you that I'm leaving, and please know that I feel that as well. The hardest part of this whole moving on thing is knowing that it makes any of you even a little bit sad. I hate that, but it's part of it. Can't rescue you from it, and I even feel it myself. But please know that if it makes us sad to lose one another, then this shared ministry that we had that means it was something worth celebrating and worth praising God for. See, if there's real hurt, that means there was real love and real joy. The things most worth having are the same ones that it hurts to lose. No pastor is an island, and no pastor can do anything on his or her own. They need God, and they need help. 
and you have been my help. So I have a few thank yous to offer as I go. And I wanted them to happen during the service and not at the luncheon because we have some folks that are watching from all over the country and I want to make sure that they hear it. I have some thank yous to offer as I go because more than sadness or excitement, what I'm really feeling this morning is just that, gratitude. I feel grateful. First, I will thank Taylor and Annabelle, my love and my light. I haven't the words except to say that the grace of God that will one day rescue me from death itself has by some miracle shined upon me on this side of eternity through your presence in my life. I want to say thanks to my parents and my sister, to the Kurtz and Mills family. Family is everything to me. Y'all have been my rock and my joy. And in the words of one of my favorite songwriters, always remember there was nothing worth sharing like the love that let us share our name. Next, I want to thank all of you, the whole congregation, the church, for many years of laughter, joy, tough ministry, growing together, and worshiping our God right alongside me. Thank you for your trust in me. Thank you for investing in me and the ministry that I offered here. Thank you for welcoming me into the sacred spaces of your life, both the most joyful and the most sorrowful. It's my belief that we always found God there with us. Thank you for doing this work alongside me. With God's help, we did do some pretty great work. Thanks especially to all my youth, former youth, and youth leaders. I laughed so hard during some of those youth events and trips that I couldn't believe I got paid to do this. <laughs> I would have done it for free. I know you're thinking, now he tells us. <laughs> youth, your journey on the road to faith was always the most exciting part of my ministry and the most fulfilling. I'm ready to try something new in my call, and it will be joyful for me, to be sure. But it will never replace or surpass the joy that I felt ministering to youth in this place. To my praise team folks and education folks, my mission trip folks, I love you all. I loved worshiping and teaching and singing and making music and serving others. What a joy. I want to take a moment uh, before I close here. I want to especially thank some colleagues that I pastored alongside. Susan Reisinger, who got me as fresh and green as ministers come, but invested in me and loved on me and encouraged me and spoke a tough word when necessary. And though I didn't really need the lesson, she also showed me right, one, right away from day one in ministry that ministry is not just a man's game. And women can absolutely nail it as preachers and leaders. Susan, I am so thankful for you. Thanks to Pastor Jan, who's here this morning, who was my supervisor when I was an intern here in seminary and then was my colleague for many years as pastors. Jan had way too much faith in me. As an intern, he let me preach on Christmas Eve. <laughs> an intern, he gave me the family service on Christmas Eve. And you know what? I bombed it. <laughs> it was awful. Uh, I, I prepared a full length sermon for a service where there were dozens of children running around with their heads like chopped off. It was crazy. But he let me try, he saw me fail, and I remember he still encouraged me. And he told me he had faith that I'd get it right the next time. <laughs> and the next time, I actually think I did. Jan, you also showed me that the most important thing you can do as a pastor is love your people. I never forgot that, never will. I'm thankful for you, Jan.
can't look at them. <laughs> Andrew, I don't have words. What a mentor. I'll spend my whole life trying to be half the pastor you are and never get there. I feel blessed to call you not only my mentor, but my friend. You may not know this, but I still call him when I'm unsure of what that line open, Andrew. <laughs> to Lynn, Christy, and Anne, faithful women that I have the joy of serving alongside, albeit for far too short a time in each case, I'm thankful for you all. I'm grateful for Pastor Nick Van Gombos, who I know is watching this morning, who saw in me a guy who had gifts that were beyond what his title suggested, and joined in ministry with me that was less like a head of staff and an associate, less like a boss and a subordinate and more like a true partnership in ministry. And it offered me the opportunity to do anything and everything I wanted to try and truly test out these wings that will now carry me to a new calling. He's watching today. Nick, I'm thankful for you. To Pastor Kyle, who continued in that model that Nick set in many ways has treated me like a full partner in all of this. I have appreciated your support, especially as I engaged in this recent season of discerning what was next for me. You were a great support and I appreciate all of our conversations. You've been a true colleague and friend and I'm thankful for our time together. But before I close and we wrap up our worship with singing together one more time, I want to thank a few individuals specifically. You see, what all pastors know is there are congregants who make your life more difficult. I mean, not in this church, don't worry. Uh, and there are congregants who make your life easier. Every church actually has some of both. But then there are a few congregants that you know deep down in the depths of your soul that were it not for the grace of them, the grace of their presence in your ministry, you wouldn't be half the pastor that you are. Bobby Bird. Several years after I started here, Bobby and I were talking and she revealed to me that she'd been praying for me every day since I started. And she just kept right on moving in the conversation like what she said wasn't a big deal. But I was so moved by that. And Bobby, through the years when I had difficult times and seasons in my life, you always knew just by looking at me or listening to my voice. You always had a caring word or some wise advice or thought or just the simple reminder that you were still praying for me and it sustained me in my ministry. And Bobby, with others like Linda Woodman and Paul Tyndall and the Fenimores and the late Waldrons and Ivans, so many others, God rest their souls, y'all showed me why scripture is so often reminding us that the younger generations of the faith have so much to learn from the older generations. I know why the Bible says it now, and I know it because of you. Bobby, I love you. You are the Christian and the faithful believer that I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> Next, Lee Whites. I said there were congregants that make your lives as, as pastors easier. And when I said that, the first face that popped into Kyle's head and the first face that popped into mine was the face of Lee Whites. I don't know if you know how much he does around here, but if you don't, then you aren't around here enough. Because the efforts of Lee and Bob Fisher, they kept this place going during the pandemic. And without Lee, I simply would not have made it through my time as a functional solo pastor uh, during the transition. Lee, you not only take care of a thousand things around here, but you do it with joy, enthusiasm. You're always so encouraging to me personally, and you're always a team player. And on top of all that, 
you make me sound way better singing every Sunday morning than I do. I hear myself in the shower, and I don't know what you're doing, but it is magic. Lee, I am grateful for you, brother. Thank you. While we're talking music, I need to thank Julie Caudill. Julie, I don't know how many songs we've sung together over the years, but it's easily in the tens of thousands. When you think of all the rehearsals, running all these songs three, four, five times, and then on Sunday, and then the concerts, and the events, and everything, I have sung more songs with you than anyone else in my life. And that is such a gift that you gave me. While I may join the praise team at Paoli once in a while in my new church gig, I'm sort of glad that it won't be more often than that because no one could ever replace you as a partner in making music. You stretched me as a musician. You laughed at my stupid antics and jokes every week in rehearsal. You added thousands of Doug measures to songs and you were just an amazing partner in ministry. I'm so proud of what we've done together of the great music we've made, of the worship that we've helped other people offer our God. And above all, I'm so happy to call you my friend. I will miss you dearly. Thank you. Where did all this water go? <laughs> Just a couple more. When I started as the CE guy over 15 years ago, I had a spirit-filled spirit conversation where I asked Pat Loretti to be my right-hand gal in education around here. Pat's watching today as well. That conversation and the Lord prompting Pat to agree to do that was the Lord's way of providing for my ministry and protecting me in my ministry for the next decade plus. I didn't even know it then, but that's what God was doing. Pat is gifted for ministry in all the ways that I am not and I'm gifted in all the ways that she does not want to do. And so it made Pat the perfect compliment, the perfect one to come alongside me and do this for the duration. Pat was there uh, when I first started and she's stepping down completely independent of my decision to move on. She didn't know that when she decided to step down. But I was twice the minister here that I would have been without Pat. And all these generations of children and youth that can say they heard of God's love for them through my ministry, it's because I had Pat Loretti next to me, working alongside me and telling them the exact same thing. Pat, I love you. And yes, to me, you will always be Patty Melt. And yes, I will always love how much your sons hate it when I call you that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you knew Meg Kilcoyne, or for most of my time here, Meg Beach was going to get a shout out. I already thank the youth leaders in general, but Meg, you are my church sister, one of my dearest friends, and you did something which I didn't even think possible. You married a guy so cool and fun that you may actually be my second favorite person in the relationship now. <laughs> No, joking aside, the laughs we shared, oh my gosh. I've never laughed so hard in my life. Meg was the only youth leader that I inherited when I started here who is still involved in the youth ministry. So Meg, whatever legacy I'm leaving behind, it's as much yours as it is mine. So much laughter, so much deep, important ministry done. So many kids that entered confirmation or youth group unsure about how they felt about faith and then left those things totally bought into this Jesus guy. It was God that did that, but God used us. Time and again, different kids, but the same story of God transforming people's lives through the laughter and love and joy that we got to share with them. There is no one else I would have wanted to do it with. Love to this. Finally, Carol, my big sis, the best secretary in the world. My constant in this place, 
We worked day in, day out together to do all that we've done. From my first day here to my last, and I could not have done it without you. So glad you joined youth leadership, glad that I got to have you in praise team and all these different parts of my ministry. You were truly a partner in it all, and I could not have done it without you. I've seen you grow in your own faith, and you've become such a strong woman of faith. And while you would credit me with a lot of that growth, I'm here to tell you that it's actually inspiring to me. To see how God can transform life through the church, through ministry, and even through my presence in it, it's the reason I do what I do, the reason I get so excited about all this stuff. I've been there for you when you've needed it, and you've been there for me when I've needed it. You are a dear friend, my big sister, and I love you. So thankful for you. Is there no more water in this church? <laughs> Last page, okay. As I wrap up, one final thank you. I mean, there are dozens more people I could have talked about, but we've all been here long enough, so just one last one. I wanna thank our God. When I signed my letter to all of you informing you that I had received a new call and was moving on, right above the signature, I wrote the salutation, Soli Deo Gloria. In Latin, that means to God alone be the glory. Anything good I've accomplished here, it is by the grace of God alone. These aren't jokes, these aren't just words. I'm telling you, it was all him. It was all him. And so I thank my God and my Lord Jesus Christ for the privilege of pastoring this church and the honor of journeying spiritually alongside all of you and for the joy of ministry in this time and in this place. I thank my God, I praise our God, and to God alone be the glory. Amen.
partnership of our faith may become effective as you comprehend all the good that we share in Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the heart of this saint has been refreshed through you, my brothers and sisters. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and every day.